welcome to Layers with Larry. I'm Larry. These are all my layers. So Larry, you keep telling us about the age of the layers in the rocks in Bighorn Basin. How do you know how old they are? That's a great question. Um, let me see if I can answer it a little bit for you. Um, you know, anytime you see sedimentary rocks, um, that is rocks formed of sediment, sand, mud, whatever, We've been talking about a bunch of different kinds of, of layers of rocks in this series. Um, they're layered, as you'd expect, and normally uh, the layers at the bottom are older than the layers at the top. Uh, that's known as uh, relative dating. Now, that doesn't tell me how old the rock layers are, and it tells me kind of relative to each other which ones are younger which ones are older. There is a way to actually measure the absolute age of rocks and it has to do with, um, with radioactive isotopes. <laughs> that is versions of elements that you'd recognize but have a special structure that causes them to be unstable and they change over time. Uh, and that's the time we'll be talking about in a moment. Take a look at this picture. <clears throat> this shows a view uh, looking towards the power plant up the canyon, Shoshone Canyon. You've probably seen it a million times if you ever hike up there. And um, you can see the, the separation between the pre-Cambrian rocks at the bottom and the first sedimentary rocks that formed um, in Wyoming called Flathead Sandstone as part of a different video. I can't, we can't really date the absolute age of the um, Flathead Sandstone. I can't do it. But the rocks below, we can. And the difference is the sedimentary rocks don't have any volcanic activity or igneous activity related to them. If the Flathead Sandstone had a layer of volcanic ash in it, we could date it because we could date the volcanic ash. Just like we can date the rocks that you see in, the, in, in that picture by the power plant, those orange dikes that run through the older rock of the Precambrian. We could date the Precambrian nicely <laughs> using a radioactive dating method, I'll explain in a moment. And we find that those gray gneisses and granites in there and schists, I say that carefully, um, are 2.5 billion years old. But those orangish dikes that run through there are not 2.5 billion years old. They're closer to about 2 billion years old. So they formed 500 million years after the gneisses formed. When magma comes up from below, from molten rock, like those dikes used to be, and pushes its way into existing rocks, it causes cracks and fissures, unless the cracks and fissures are already there, and then it'll follow those, and it will fill those cracks, and sometimes even expand them, as the magma goes up through those, those cracks. Now, this happened deep in the Earth, so unlike magma that comes out on the surface of the Earth, Um, that rock, that magma cools very quickly. This magma in those dikes cooled very slowly. That's why we see the little crystals, the little flecks. Well, when all magma that comes up out of the earth has a mixture of elements in it. And they're all kind of mixed up and randomly arranged around each other. So from the time that the earth formed, about 4.5 billion years ago, radioactive elements that were part of the earth have been breaking down over time. Radioactive potassium, for example. You know, you need potassium, you gotta eat bananas, get potassium, right? Well, some of the potassium in your banana and some of the potassium in the concrete in your foundation of your house is radioactive potassium. And it spontaneously changes into other elements, eventually argon. The potassium argon dating method is the one that can be used to date rocks as old as the very first rocks on Earth, about four billion years ago, up to about rocks that are about 100,000 years ago. So when that magma cooled in, in a place, that time clock started in that felts or in that potassium argon dating method. And so what the scientists will do is it will take 
uh, samples of these rocks. Here's a picture of where uh, scientists have cored out bits of this, um, this dike for study, part of it to study the, the age. So they would take that back to the laboratory and they would do very, um, very detailed analysis of the potassium argon ratios. And based on the ratio, we can work backwards and figure out how much time has elapsed since that magma cooled into a, a hard solid rock. And in, in the case of those dikes, it's about two billion years old. You know, some things are, are not so old. You've probably heard of uh, dating things like um, old human habitations, uh, anthropology or archeology, span you know, where they find things like the, um, the bully mammoth that they found over in uh, the reservoir here not too long ago, a couple of years, I guess now. And then they can date the age of that using carbon because all living things like us and trees contain carbon. And while we're alive, we're taking in carbon. We're kind of like the molten magma at that point in a sense. But once we die, uh, or once an organism dies, the carbon is no longer being added to the animal's bones or teeth or anything like that. Uh, another time clock starts called carbon-14 dating. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of carbon that's naturally occurring. Uh, but when an animal or a plant dies, the amount of carbon-14 in it gradually decreases. We know that over at about 6,000 years, half of that carbon will have changed. We need to use uh, different methods depending on the time involved. So potassium argon dating is really useful in dating rocks, but only if they have volcanic material. So that's how we can date some of the later rocks, like the Cody Shale or the, um, uh, the Groant Formation or any of these things. If they have deposited in them somewhere either what was magma and it cooled or volcanic ash that erupts out into the atmosphere and then settles onto oceans and settles at the bottom of the ocean, you'll find layers of that volcanic ash. Those layers can be dated, absolutely. So if I date this layer because of the volcanic ash at 50 million years old and I've got a rock layer underneath it, I know it's older than 50 million years old and the layer above it is less than 50 million years old. So it's a simplified version of, of how it works, but I hope that helps explain a little bit of how we can date the age of layers, layers.